Where are we going, bud? We're going to see the snow. And so I thought it would be a good time to talk about uh, how winter weather affects your range on your Tesla, as well as some tips, secrets, whatever you want to call them, that I got from some of my friends who live in some of the most extreme cold climates in the United States. Let's go. Electric cars, like regular cars, like many things, behave differently in extremely cold environments. So right now with the polar vortex upon us in the United States, I thought it made sense to kind of talk about some of the secret things or some of the tips that you can really take advantage of in terms of getting the most out of your Tesla in these situations. So the first thing is that your car will not be able to charge nearly as fast when it's extremely cold. The battery in the Model 3 doesn't have a separate heater. So the Model S and X, the battery actually has its own separate system to heat it and kind of keep it at an ideal temperature. So the Model 3 is a bit different. It doesn't have one of those. So the battery will actually get really cold. And at that point, it won't be able to charge or discharge nearly as fast as it normally does. So tip, if you are driving, you're going on a road trip, you're wrapping it up before you head in for the night, make sure you charge as much as you need to for the next day because otherwise when you wake up, it's going to take a lot longer to charge than it normally would. So hit the supercharger or whatever before you go to the hotel and call it a night. The next thing is that the, you'll notice that the windows don't roll up all the way when you're in extremely cold environments. Now, this is dramatic, but I just wanted to show you an example. And that is because if they do go up all the way, they will freeze and then dislodge from the door when you try to open it. So don't be alarmed when you see that. That is intentional. And the third thing is that the actual charge port here will continually engage and disengage because these little tiny prongs in there will get frozen again and you won't be able to charge, which would be a really bad scenario in a cold environment like this. It's also really interesting to look at the data. Fortunately, through Tesla, we log the watt hours per mile of all the trips that people take. And because I'm an advisor to the company, I can look at this data and help shed some light and tell that story. And so what we're gonna do now, I'm gonna head back to the studio and take a look at this data and see exactly how the cold weather affects your ability to drive. All right, back here, almost to the studio. Have all the data, ran the numbers over the weekend. We're gonna go see exactly how winter weather affects your Tesla. So combined, we have over 2.4 million trips that have been logged by over 9,000 vehicles using Tesla. One of the interesting stats that we get when we look at this data is the watt hours per mile. That is the actual amount of energy it takes to move the car exactly one mile. So when looking at this overall, the Model 3 comes in at just over 333 watt hours per mile, the Model S at 383 and the Model X at 454. But that's overall, that's not telling us much about winter driving versus summer driving. So what we need to do is take a look at this stat over time. We started tracking this back in 2016. And as I mentioned, we have over 2.4 million trips logged. We did notice a significant dip once Tesla started delivering the Model 3 in greater quantities around July of 2018, which also coincides with warmer weather. If we look at our overall trend, we see a fairly flat line showing how the water hours per mile changes throughout the year. But there is a distinct decline starting in June and lasting through around October. This of course makes sense when we overlay the median temperature during this time for these trips. And that kind of matches our perception, right? As the temperatures kind of normalize and get more agreeable, the car doesn't have to use as much energy to move forward. So that, that all kind of makes sense so far. But what we want to do is dig in just a little bit deeper and try to figure out exactly how much the temperature affects the energy needed to go forward. And that's what this chart here is trying to show us. Each bar represents a five degree temperature bucket, if you will. So we basically logged every trip that happened within that bucket and then looked at the median watt hours per mile. So that's how much energy it took to move the vehicle one mile when the temperature was in that range. 
And if you compare the best to the worst, you can see that it's a pretty dramatic difference where right around minus 20 degrees Fahrenheit, you're looking at over 620 watt hours per mile, whereas in the 60 degree Fahrenheit range, we're at just above 362 watt hours per mile. That is a 72% difference from the worst to the best. So when you divide those two, what you find is that as the temperature drops one degree, you need 0.6% more energy to travel that same distance, that one mile that we're measuring here. Now this is for all models, but if we focus specifically on the Tesla Model 3, we can see that this is even more dramatic. In this scenario, we have an average 4% increase in watt hours needed to go one mile per five degrees, per bucket that we're measuring here. That means if you divide those two, for every one degree that the temperature drops, you need 0.8% more energy to travel that same distance. And I'm guessing that's partly due to the missing battery warmer, meaning you're gonna spin up a ton of energy just getting things ready to travel, uh, or potentially just because the Model 3 is still new that there's still software updates happening and eventually this will actually become better than the other two models. But right now, that's what we're seeing, an almost one to one degree to percent energy uh, change uh, as kind of an inverse correlation there. So the temperature can obviously have a big impact on your car's ability to travel a certain distance. That's no big shock there. And actually, it doesn't even matter whether or not your car is electric or gas. In fact, the U.S. Department of Energy reports that fuel economy tests show a regular gas car miles per gallon can drop as much as 22% on even very short trips in these winter climates. So remember, when you're driving in the winter, you're going to need to pay a little bit more attention and kind of prepare just a little bit more than you typically would in the warmer months. But if you follow these tips, you charge up full every night, especially if you're driving and you're stopping to sleep, you want to charge before you do so. Otherwise, in the morning, it'll take much longer because the, the speed at which it can charge is much slower. As well, you can't do the pre-warming if the battery is under 20% charge. So you definitely want to have that so you can warm it up before you even have to go out there. And be patient because we are still at the very, very beginning of the EV revolution, of our, our transportation system switching from internal combustion engines to electric motors. And so everything you're doing right now are just lessons that you can pass down to future generations about how to handle these things. And hopefully we'll look back on this fondly years to come as kind of, you know, the, the novelty of having to, to deal with this back then because we'll have solved it just so dramatically kind of over the top by then. So it's going to be a fun journey and I hope you'll stick with me. And if you want to track your trips using Tesla, you can do so by getting the app for free. It's available on Android and iOS. Just go search for it in the app stores respectively. Uh, we don't share or sell your data ever. That's a part of our policy. Um, and we also don't store your Tesla credentials. We just use them initially to get a token, which then we can query the car and then you know give you that data. It's sort of like a Fitbit for your Tesla. So I'll put a link to that down in the description there as well. And lastly, don't forget, when you free the data, your mom will follow. I'll see you guys back here in the next one.